Hello, this video follows on from the video on drag, which you might want to watch if you haven't already. So here we're going to talk about how drag forces change with speed and how objects achieve a terminal velocity when they're falling through fluids. Um, so let's start off by looking at this ball here. Right, we have a ball just as it's released. So the reaction force of whatever it was holding it up has disappeared and it's just been released. So it's not yet started to gain speed through the air. And at this particular point, we, could see, we can see that the only force acting is its weight, and therefore the resultant force is equal to its weight. And therefore, if it's falling, um, let's say in the air, the acceleration of the ball is equal to the acceleration due to gravity. So A is equal to G, and the resultant force is actually W. So the ball will start to gather speed, and this second diagram shows a point in its motion where it has gained speed, but it has not yet reached terminal velocity. So this might be a few seconds after the ball has been dropped. So drag is starting to build up. There is an upward drag force, but it's not yet equal to the weight, all right? The velocity isn't sufficient for the drag force to have become equal to the weight. So in this situation, the resultant is equal to W minus the drag, minus because obviously it's pointing in the opposite direction. So, and because there's a still a resultant force in the downward direction, which is W minus drag, then acceleration is still going to be present, but it's actually going to be less than gravity than the acceleration due to gravity at this point. So somewhere between zero and 9.81, depending on its speed and therefore the drag force itself. Okay, so the ball speeds up and speeds up and the drag force increases and increases, and eventually the drag force equals the weight. And at this particular point, when we've got balanced forces between the thing that's causing the acceleration and the drag, it reaches a constant velocity because the resultant force falls to zero at this point. And therefore, the acceleration also equals zero. So there's no resultant force and there's no acceleration. So the ball then falls with a constant velocity from that point onwards. And we call that vo constant velocity terminal velocity. It's the fastest velo velocity that the ball can actually achieve, bearing in mind that it's being acted on by drag forces. Okay, so there are three scenarios that you need to be aware of and need to be able to explain. At the point of release, when the only force on it is weight and acceleration is due to gravity, before it reaches terminal velocity, where the resultant is W minus drag, but it's still not zero, and therefore the acceleration is still present, but less than gravity, and a situation at and beyond terminal velocity, where the two forces cancel each other out to give you a constant velocity and an acceleration of zero. Okay, so that's that. And now let's just look at um, a graph of terminal velocity and force against time for an object which is released in the air and falls to reach terminal velocity. So I'm not going to worry too much about the direction of the velocity. Technically, velocity will be negative because it's heading down, right? It's heading downwards. So, but I'm going to draw it in the opposite way, just for clarity's sake, really. Um, and so what would happen is the velocity would start at zero and the initial gradient would be equal to 9.81. But then as drag forces kicked in, the object would the rate of acceleration rather would be reduced until this point here when the object would reach terminal velocity and continue moving with a constant speed. Okay, so that's what the velocity time graph for an, an object falling through the air and reaching terminal velocity looks like. And it's at this point that the forces come into balance and the object starts to fall with a constant velocity. So that's the VT graph. Down here, we've got a force against time graph and I want to try and draw all three of these forces on the same axes. So we're looking at the weight and the drag force and therefore the resultant force and we're going to look at how that's acting. All right, so let's have a look at the weight first. Well, weight obviously is constant and we can say that it's negative because it's pointing downwards. So that's the opposite way to, I've, to which I've, I've, I'm sorry, that's not a very straight line. The opposite way to which I've, I've drawn the graph up above. Okay, so that's, that's supposed to be a straight line. We'll just leave it as a straight line because for, just for, for quickness sake. Now the drag force um, obviously depends on the velocity. So the drag force is going to increase. Let's have a red pen now. The drag force is going to start off at zero and the velocity is zero. And it's going to increase 
in this same sort of way until term of velocity when it's going to stop increasing. So at this point here, the forces will come into balance. Okay, so the drag looks like that and the weight's constant, or roughly like that. That's not exactly right, but we're going to say that it increases gradually and then curves away and then you are left with um, a constant drag force at term of velocity. So what does the resultant look like? Well, the resultant is just the sum of those two forces. So when you add these two forces up, you end up with a start point down there and by the time it gets to here, the resultant falls to zero because it's at term of velocity and therefore from then on it's going to be on the axis. So effectively you get a, um, the, same sh the same shape graph as the drag force except it's uh, been translated downwards by uh, a factor equal to the weight. So effectively the sum of the two forces looks like that. Okay, so that's the velocity against time graph and force against time graphs for a falling object reaching terminal velocity.